time lapse of traffic in urban setting at dusk. Just arrived at our hotel here in Saratoga, attending the New York AER conference. Looks like a really nice place. Had a pretty easy commute getting here. Just a train, a shuttle that conveniently showed up just as we were pulling into the station. And we're excited to see what comes next. Living area found. Next stop, room. I hate walking into a dark hotel room. First step, find the lights. Welcome to my world. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, in this segment of the vlog, this is Jake and Melissa get oriented to a hotel room without eyesight. Uh, wow, it's really narrow in here. So, <laughs> the tricky part is just trying to get, get oriented to a new space, right? So, just trying to figure out what we're doing. And we found one light, so that's good. Good. I always like to find the thermostat. So, here's over with a window. Now these types of heaters, I've stayed in enough hotel rooms to know that this style is very reminiscent of probably having the buttons on it. Oh, yep, here they are. Might have to ask for sighted assistance to help figure out what those buttons do. What have you found? Um, I liked searching the perimeter first, so I found this dresser, I think it's a dresser, yeah, it has drawers, a refrigerator. Nice. Nice. Uh, I found that with the TV. So I kind of start by walking around the edge of the space so I can get a feel for how big it is, if there are any tripping hazards, very important. We're on the first floor, so it's important to make sure the blinds are closed. The lamps over here, bedside table, the bed obviously. We're trying to figure out where to put the bags out of the way. I found the desk, always an interesting space. It's like a slide out desk. There's drawers apparently. Every bathroom is laid out slightly differently. Um, I don't so think I've ever vlogged in a bathroom. No? Continue. Okay, well, we're, we're doing it now. Soap, towels, that's the first thing I go for. Um, toilet paper holder is interesting in this bathroom in that the vanity kind of curves around and, I, and then the bathtub is right here. So as far as there's tissues, uh, you want to look for the toilet paper roll? So right be beyond the door. Oh my god. So you have to, I guess, theoretically speaking, be like sitting here and reach way over there. When you're orienting to a space, even something as simple as um, different products, how are they labeled? What are they? Right? So uh, things associated with the coffee maker, the shampoo in the bathroom, things of that nature you have to use Seeing AI or another app to try to figure out what it is. Or just call the front desk. Or just call the front desk. Or, or just squirt some into your hand and feel the consistency and do it the old fashioned way. Finding all of the outlets in the rooms. I like to start with these lamps, like on this nightstand here, sometimes behind the nightstand, sometimes on the desk, but it's always an adventure looking for them. Sometimes you have to play electrician and do a little digging. How not to lose your stuff in a hotel room. Let's begin. Dog food, a Labrador's favorite item. We have two different types here. We place it on the dresser so that it's not within their reach. Non-hanging clothes in the drawer. Grab and go pile on the desk closest to the door. Purse, tree pouches, harnesses, leashes, jackets. Hanging clothes in the closet. Trash cans. If your dog has a tendency of digging through them, it's always a great idea to put it on a high surface like a dresser. Find key landmarks in and outside of your hotel. We already found our emergency exit, for example. We're conveniently on the first floor. That's great. And restaurants. Are you hungry? Always. I should know that by now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about restaurants. One thing about staying in hotels a lot of people ask about is if you are blind or visually impaired, how do you know what's around you? Sometimes you end up in the middle of nowhere. I like to call that Hotel Island. One of the reasons why I love staying in full service hotels. Worst case scenario, you've always got a restaurant. We're fortunate today to be staying in what we presume to be a more walkable area, big question mark. <laughs> Open up the Maps app here and see what we can pull up. A euro for old uh, time's sake. <laughs> Euros, yum. Yum. <laughs> if you don't get that reference, watch our first video. <gasps> Ben and Jerry's. Uncommon grounds, that must be a coffee shop. Very creative. <laughs> Very creative. 
I'm looking at this uh, El Mexicana restaurant. Okay. Seems to be kind of a family place from what I was reading. Okay, do you want to see how we might get there? Sure. So my favorite way to do that is to just go into maps on the iPhone and pull up the route itself. There's right next to the route, it'll tell you how long it'll take and then a button for go. If you tap on how long it'll take you, it'll preview the route, which is really great. Kind of helps, helps us figure out what's doable and what's not doable, how hard the route might be. Take a left onto the road. That's always a fun one. Mm. How many times have we ended up in like a driveway? Or... Right. It's it's not descriptive as far as which road we need to take a left on. And it's usually like some sort of unmarked path, a giant parking lot. Should we try Mexican then? Let's do it. Dog's point of view, Aaron, poorly leading. We are at Circular Street, thanks to the very helpful audible pedestrian signal. Dogs point of view, Aaron, Orly Crossing Street. Burritos, yum. Getting oriented to the conference space ahead of time. We're exhibitors and we're looking for that now. Time lapse, setting up conference table. Aaron and Melissa approach hotel room. So Melissa, how did Aaron know where the room was? Well, he got up on his hind legs and he read the room number. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> we utilize something called targeting as guide dog handlers in which we teach our guide dogs where certain things are located that we visit often. This is cozy. Look at these guys. Cuddle up next <laughs> to you on the bed. I made a video a while back about staying in a hotel with a guide dog. In that video, I talked about making a bed on the floor or something for Forley. Times have definitely changed. Title slide, day two. And good morning. Good morning. It's almost 7 a.m. when exhibiting starts shortly. We've just had our coffee. A lot of people ask us about dressing for success at conferences. We travel a lot for work and spend a lot of time at conferences. I jokingly say we spent half our life in an exhibit hall. <laughs> and so we just thought we'd talk quick about that. So my tip is always to find stuff that um, is wrinkle resistant and go with like a business casual to business attire unless the dress code specifically specifies formal attire. Sometimes it does and if so, really make sure your stuff is tailored. I've seen way too many people wearing suits that are either too big or too small at these things. Um, so I went with a business blue, kind of a sky blue Oxford button down shirt. Love the Oxford, doesn't wrinkle very well, um, holds up nicely. It's fall so I paired that with a pair of dark olive, dark green uh, chino pants and I love my leather Chelsea boots. They're slip-on, slip-off. They're great when you're going through airport security. And for accessories, I just went with a simple tactile watch in silver with a leather band. Matches my belts. It's by a brand called Ian. Uh, very easy, very nice watch. I love fashion, so whenever I dress in professional attire, I'm also thinking about interesting color pieces, interesting texture on those pieces, just having some fun while sticking with color schemes that are maybe not neutral but still professional. So in my case, I'm wearing a lighter blue long sleeve shirt. It's a thin drapey material, a bit shorter, and then it has tapered sleeves that kind of form a bell shape at the bottom, but really fun, really nice, um, fun floral pattern. And then I'm pairing that with dark blue dress pants. And I also have some low boots on. They are a nice chocolate brown with a buckle on them. Part of conference attire is knowing that you're going to be standing at an exhibit hall table for long periods of time. So while you want your shoes to be fashionable and cute, you also want them to be comfortable. Melissa and I are attempting to review the agenda for the day. How's it going? Um, it's interesting. So QR codes, while helpful, 
are kind of a sighted person's tool. For somebody who's totally blind who can't see the QR code, it can be very difficult to find it in the viewfinder, in the camera lens, and so I'm struggling a little bit with that. Okay, well, let's just um, ask the event organizers when we go down to the exhibit hall. Okay, sounds good. Overhead view, Orly to Melissa and Aaron walking down hallway. Aaron and Melissa approach exhibit hall table. Breakfast of outreach champions right here served on an exhibit table. <laughs> we have bacon, sausage, potatoes, an apple cider donut, and uh, fruit. <laughs> and most importantly, coffee. <laughs> yes. Title slide, several hours later. Conference is done for the day, packing up now, going to dinner, heading out tomorrow. Title slide, day three, 7.30 a.m. It's checkout time. We're out walking around, checking out Saratoga Springs, got a coffee, and we ran into this little number. Total barricade obstacle. So it sounds like, based on the cars going by, there's a lane that's probably blocked off. And then I've been hearing people walking around going that way as well. Yeah, I, I heard that too. So I think let's, let's explore the curb, be really careful. But I definitely heard some people walking off to our right. So I assume that there's a little safety lane for us to, to walk through. Okay, let's try out. it. Hey, let's check this park out. Yeah, that's Dog's point of view, walking through park. Train scenery, sun setting over the Hudson River and mountain. Dogs resting on train. Just arrived at the train station and about to catch our Uber, but I wanted to take a second and give credit where credit is due. We really enjoyed our time at the Holiday Inn, Saratoga Springs. Yeah, it's a Holiday Inn, but you know, they were really, had really good customer service. They helped us, whatever we needed. They saw an issue, they fixed an issue. We also use descriptive language. And sometimes when you're interacting with someone who's new to blindness, they say things like over there or this way and give directions that are less than helpful. So shout out to the staff at the hotel for being descriptive, for being inclusive, and just for using common sense and being great human beings. Even when we could not get a ride to the train station, they had one of their own staff transport us. That is quality customer service right there. We look forward to possibly going back and staying at that property again. Time-lapse of traffic in urban setting at dusk.